Satna, my name is Zitar Karan, I am a Kundalini Yoga and Meditation teacher and also hypnotherapist. And today I want to talk to you about connection between hypnotherapy and meditation and yoga and connection with intuition, of course. And the word hypnosis have been tainted with association as something where you lose autonomy over your body and you become easily suggestible. That is absolutely not true. In hypnosis you never lose autonomy. All you are losing is your ego. But let's start from the beginning, okay? The best way to understand hypnosis is when we understand the brain waves and the different brain waves that we experience during the day. Uh, there are four or five states that we have during the day. Now there are a new, the new thing is to add the five, but first is the beta state. That's our everyday state. Yeah, where we are perceiving things as they are, where we are interacting with the world, when we are being creative. Then we have an alpha state. Alpha state has a little bit um, calmer brain waves and it's a state of meditation or we can call it hypnosis, very light hypnosis. It is a state of when you are watching TV or when you are maybe driving, when you are reading a book, when you are basically entering into another world just slightly, right? Maybe you're watching TV, you're suspending belief and you enter into another world and you allow yourself to perceive what the movie is telling you to perceive. It doesn't mean you're losing your autonomy in any way. You are just suspending belief. The third state is the theta state. And this is the state of hypnosis, of deep, it's actually a state of deep meditation. As meditators, we can access this state. This, uh, the brain waves are very big and very calm. Lots of times when we are meditating, you are not realizing you are in that state until you get out from it and you're like, oh, I was starting to see something. Some, there are just these like as if images pe being penetrated through. Then we have delta state and the delta state is a state of sleep where we where the brain is relaxed and it's as if in another dimension there is also a state gamma which is it's kind of being added as a new state because uh, we have started noticing that many people many very active minded people are functioning in a state of gamma which is um, called super consciousness, but it's a super alertness. It's probably a state when you, it's a state when you had like a lots of coffee, right? And there is just so much, so much going on. It doesn't mean none of these are superior in any way. They're all important. Super consciousness doesn't mean it is superior in any way. It can be actually very distracting. During the day we pass through these states, our brain passes through them. And now, uh, the theta state, or this light hypnosis state, we pass through twice a day when we are falling asleep and when we are just waking up. So sometimes you may actually catch yourself when you're falling asleep, you're kind of like starting to see something. It's not quite a dream, you're still aware but you are starting to go into this imaginary world or a world of imagination. And the same way when you are waking up, you are passing through this theta state where you're starting to kind of see the images or maybe you start to hear the words. We pass through this theta state. However, we cannot hold it still right we fall asleep and then we are unconscious we don't know what's happening so in hypnosis what we do we try to keep the person or ourselves in this theta state 
Now here is the interesting thing, what it has to do with yoga and meditation. In yoga, we have a state called Turiya. And Turiya, interestingly, also begins with the T, is a state of Tera. It's just another word. When the lake becomes very still and you start to see everything that is inside the lake, you can see what is on the bottom, you can see the rocks, the plants, the fish. Otherwise, it's very active, right? When the brain is active, those very, very active brain waves, full of ego, full of emotions, you can see maybe even dust from the bottom, very hard to see what is on the bottom. It's almost impossible. And what is on the bottom is our own inner guidance, our own Atma, our own what, um, our own Guru Dev, subtle wisdom, our own subconscious, our own soul, our own intuition. And that's what we can gleam when we enter this Turiya state and we start connecting with it which is a very important connection. Because during the day we forget, we are so outward oriented. But here we go inwards. Bhagavad Gita describes these elements of our being in the most beautiful way. There is a description of Arjuna going and sitting on a chariot pulled by the horses. But his charioteer, the one that controls the chariot, his body, is Krishna or Atma, this divine wisdom. So the same way within all of us, we have this divine wisdom. It is this inner guidance, this inner Krishna, this Christ consciousness, this Guru Dev. There are millions of names we can give it, but uh, we, we call it subconscious or soul. It is that that is connecting. It is this divine wisdom that we all have and is here to serve us. So during the day, it's a little bit hard to communicate with this wise soul within. But in the state of Turiya, you can do that. And you see, you don't have to believe in yoga. You don't have to believe in Krishna or Christ. Everybody has this. And it can be easily proven through hypnosis and going through hypnosis. Because all of a sudden, there is a different form of wisdom that's coming from you. Even you yourself might be a little surprised by the answers you might be start getting. Turiya, or this bottom of the lake, is the same as hypnosis. It's a state in which we can gleam what is and connect with this divine wisdom within us. No one can have such a good perspective, right, than us living this life. This, this bottom of ourselves has all the memories of all the past lives we have ever lived. This bottom of us have the memories of this life, what has ever happened and how it has affected us. It knows our fears, it knows our triggers, it knows our emotional life, it knows our purpose. There are different ways to use this Turiya state. First is to, for the healing. We can connect and heal and also find out how to proceed further so that we don't hurt ourselves more. So it's an ultimate healing method. We can also use the Turiya state to receive guidance so that we know which way to go in life. What will bring us the most success? What will bring us the most happiness and fulfillment? We can also time travel and go to past version of us or future version of us and find out where the fears and emotional blocks that we have come from where our karma comes from. 
because none of us are blank slates when we are born. Every, everyone who have ever raised a child can tell you that every single child has the personality from the moment they're born. And it becomes more crystallized as they live. And they are very different from their siblings. They are different from their friends and cousins and everyone. Maybe nothing traumatic has happened to them in this life. But they have uh, or carry memories from other lifetimes. There was a study done on ducklings, actually. And they found out that little ducklings maybe have never seen an eagle or a hawk. But they knew to be afraid of a cutout of a hawk. So a mask of a hawk. Someone who pretends to be a hawk or eagle and they would run okay when they saw it that same thing didn't happen when they did the cut out of a pigeon or where they showed them a pigeon but somewhere in their memory was that okay I need to be afraid of that so the same way it is with us we carry within us these fears and sometimes just a uh, an image of it. Maybe we see something in a movie or we read something in a book awakens that and we are much more petrified than someone else who is looking at the same thing and they're like, why are you? Why is that triggering you? And that's actually a very good way of finding out about your past lives. You might see something on TV and be like, huh, that's reminds me of something that brings a certain memory within me yeah and that's starting to happen to many people these past life memories are even if you are not doing past life regression but during the day these they can kind of like bubble up to the surface and you're thinking hmm, why am i and you think everybody else is feeling that way but it's not true and in that way, seeing yourself, seeing your past life can help you to overcome your fears, to help you overcome your blocks, and also to help you see that the fear you might have is actually nothing but a mirage. It's a mask. It's a cutout that is standing here for a real thing that happened a long time ago, but it's not happening right now. Okay, this is, and that if you just take that step, nothing will happen. You can go on and feel free. Last point I'm going to make about hypnosis and Turiya state is that it has been studied widely. Yeah, many people have studied it, but the results are mixed. And you know, they will always be mixed. It never works 100%. It is not a left brain science. It is more of an art. And there is always that interaction that is needed between the subject, their soul, their intelligence, and their willingness to do that. If the willingness is not there, or if the ego is too strong, mm, the results will be different. If you want to experience a hypnotic state, if you want to heal some past trauma and karma, then please sign up for my workshop Hypnotic Travel Through the Ages and we will go and peek into a past life, maybe find out what is your fear in that stems from that past life. We will connect with your guide and also learn and find out a little bit of wisdom about how to live your healthiest life, how to heal some parts of you. Well, if you like this video, give me a like. If you found it helpful, let me know in the comments. Also check out my other videos and practice with me. Satnam.